Hi guys, so this is the second video hanging out in the workshop during lockdown in Israel. Um, yeah, today we're basically going to be building some shelves, choosing the wood and whatnot. So let's get into it. So this is my daughter's work table. It's a rustic thing. Um, and these shelves above it are actually, they were part of a shake bar of my partner we once had. She doesn't have the shake bar anymore. And we put those shelves on there temporarily, you know, which becomes permanently. <laughs> so now we decided to build some shelves that will be the right size to go on top of her table so there won't be like this big, empty gap at the side. So um, I've taken the measurements I need. I'm going to go to the workshop in a minute and look for some materials and um, yeah, and start to make some shelves. So here I am, I got to the workshop. I've been here about an hour already. Um, I didn't film it, my son was here and uh, he's working on his skateboard. He sanded off all of the stickers and uh, given it a coat of yacht varnish yesterday evening and this morning he sanded it again and given it another coat. So uh, that's something we just did for the last hour, which uh, project he chose to pass the time a little bit. And uh, now I'm going to start on the shelves that I was talking about for my daughter's bedroom. Uh, I'm going to show you the plans and start to choose some wood. So here's the measurements. Uh, we don't really have a plan yet, but we've got some rough measurements. The width is one and a half meters. It's going to be 20 centimeters deep. And the total height, it's 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and another 25 above the top shelf, like for a bookend. So that's like 1 meter 15 altogether high. So here's my cutting list, just before I go out and start to find wood or start to look for some wood, I should have a bit of an idea what I'm looking for. So I made myself a cutting list. This is what I usually do. Um, just I look at the quick sketch. I need two sides, approximately 115 centimeters long, 20 centimeters wide, and a minimum of 1.6 centimeters thick. And I also need three shelves. They're gonna be 150 long minus the thickness of the sides, but because I didn't find the material yet, I don't know exactly how thick the sides are gonna be. So I'll figure that out later. And they need to be 20 centimeters wide and about 1.6 thick minimum. Now, when I looked at this, I also said, hmm, well, the sides, they're gonna stand on the table. So maybe at the bottom of the sides, I should give them some kind of shape, uh, make them a bit wider at the bottom to make it more stable. Um, so we'll see how that idea pans out. I'll go and look for the wood now. So I'm just gonna start my uh, search over here. I have all sorts of boards. Um, most of this wood, it's a bit, uh, it's already been plain, it's usually pretty straight. Dimension, uh, timber. shelves possibly. And I've got some poplar back here, it's a bit narrow. So uh, all sorts of pine boards here. This one's 15 centimeters and about three and a half meters long. Some more pine. So I'm gonna go and have a look outside, see what I've got out there. Well the rain stopped sun's come out and uh, here I've got a pile of all sorts of recycled material here. I've got something in mind actually so I'm going to have a dig through here and see if there's going to be enough. It's some old pine boards, they're about, I don't know, three centimeters thick, a bit more than an inch, a bit less than an inch and a half. Um, and I think they could be really nice for the job. So I'm going to have a dig through here and see what I can find.
a little over three meters, 18 centimeters wide, so that's all right. I'm not stuck on 20. Yeah, and how many meters is that? I've got that six meters there. I'm going to see how I can uh, if I can get these boards off my cutting list out of those boards there before I start moving them about and moving all that heavy material. So it appears I'm a little bit short with the boards down there. I need nearly seven meters and I've got six. So I spotted some other boards further back. So now I'm taking everything out to get back to those boards. One of the boards, looking nice. And what it ever was before, it's like an old, well, I don't know, it's got nails in it. It was used for something. All sorts of scraps from students' work. That was uh, Cyphus. Pressure treated green lumber. Not very interesting. Now, this is an interesting oh, beam. This is also just pine, but uh, this came from an old wooden building in a kibbutz that was built before Israel was made, back somewhere in the 30s. It had some stamps on the end of some of these beams that said where they came from, which was some kind of charity for Jewish settlers to make sure they could get materials and food to build their kibbutzim. So yeah, I had a whole bunch of this I built a kitchen out of. Uh, interesting history. So I ended up taking out another board from the pile and uh, so now I have a plan of action. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these guys to 120, 120, 120, 120. I'm going to rip off this groove and glue them together. So then I'm going to have two boards of approximately 28 on 115. So these are going to be the sides of the cupboard, these are going to be the shelves. So I'm going to work on these first of all because they need gluing up. I'm just going to mark a straight line where I marked it to a metre twenty before. It would be wise actually to check these measurements. Why am I checking them? Because maybe I had this board in my hand once before and made some pencil marks on it and now I'm marking on the pencil mark assuming it's this mark. So that's great, that's a good one. Also that is correct. So, measure twice, cut once. legs just so that the jigsaw can pass without sawing my table in half and uh, so the work will be supported and not snap or something. I can put the saw on an aggressive setting and connect it to the power and it will work better. It's faster that way.
winter, we're always pressure of time and the client and when will it be ready and get the money in the bank and uh, working all hours. And at the moment, it feels a little different. Who knows, maybe these energy will stay, I don't know. But, um, yeah. Now I need to take those pieces to the table saw, rip off the groove on both edges and glue them together. So here we are at the table saw. Um, the first thing I paid attention to is it's the wrong blade in the saw. So this saw is for cross cutting and we're going to change it now to a rip cut saw. I'll just show you the difference between those two saws. So this is the cross cut saw that's fitted at the moment. Um, you can see that for scale, my finger. <coughs> the teeth are quite close together and there's many of them. And this is the rip cut saw. And as you can see, there's a much bigger gap between the teeth. The angle is slightly different and there's a big gullet to get out the sawdust from a long rip cut. Well folks, it's getting late. Uh, I've been editing for hours and I still didn't get very far through this movie. So I'm going to leave it there. I want you guys to tell me what you think. Is it too long? Do I waffle on? Should I make it shorter and more concise? Should I try a vlog? I don't know what I'm doing really guys. I've just got some time and I'm having a go. Let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you in the comments below and see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. They're quite close together and there's many of them. And this is the rip cut saw. And as you can see, there's a much bigger gap between the teeth. The angle is slightly different and there's a big gullet to get out the sawdust from a long rip cut.